Okay, well, Prinandar, everybody, welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Um, firstly, thank you for bearing with us. Um, we did endeavour to try out one of our new meeting styles today in um, two of the committee rooms, um, but a little technical hitch. I'm sure we'll sort it out. So we've reverted back into the council chamber at um, Merthyr Tydfil County Borough Council. But thank you for bearing with us as we um, we tried to get that uh, that sorted. Okay. For those of you in the chamber and for those who are online, can I uh, ask everybody to mute their microphones, please, or, or, or not use their microphones at this particular time? Um, and anybody who's online, turn your camera on, Lawrence, <clears throat> and make sure your microphone is muted and then unmute it when you speak. Excuse me. <coughs> and all councillors, if they were online, must remain, uh, must ensure their cameras remain on. OK, we have begun recording, so good afternoon again, as I said, welcome to our learning um, scrutiny committee. It's on Tuesday, the 7th of February. As you know, this was due to take place on the 23rd of January, um, but uh, apologies, we had to just defer it to this date. The meeting is being recorded and may be broadcast via the authorities' internet site, and the images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes within the authority. OK. Um, and just in relation to those who are in chamber, OK, if you wish to ask a question and make a comment um, when invited by the chair, please raise your hand or obviously press the mic to indicate that you want to comment. And for Lawrence, just to reiterate, obviously, there is the virtual hand on the screen and then I'll bring you in for any comments or observations during the meeting. OK. We'll move straight into apologies for absence. I've had apologies from Councillor Jamie Scriven and Claire Jones and Councillor Claire Jones. Item number two, are there any declarations of interest? No, nobody's indicated, so we'll move on. Agenda item number three, um, this agenda item is for us to talk about the new curriculum. Before I introduce our Cabinet Member for Education, Councillor Michelle Jones, can I welcome to the Chamber um, our representatives from um, Central South Consortia. CSC, you know, we use all these acronyms, don't we, in this business, but Central South Consortia, we have got with us Clara Siri, we've got with us Helen Power and Kath Lewis as well. So thank you, ladies, um, for joining us this afternoon. Michelle, I'm going to hand straight over to you, if that's OK, to introduce this agenda item. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, so just in summary of the report. This report provides a response to legislative duties <clears throat> placed upon local authorities by Welsh Government and is part of Merthyr Tydfil County Borough Council's challenge framework to hold Central South Consortium to account for our school's preparation and readiness for the new curriculum. An update on progress by the Central South Consortium is provided in Appendix 1. Therefore, we would like to recommend at 2.1 that members discuss and debate the content of the report, reflecting on school visits and identifies if there are any further aspects of this agenda that need scrutinising. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Michelle Jones. Um, colleagues from Central South Consortia, did anybody want to say anything before we go straight into the um, agenda item? Or your case, okay? should we just kick off? Yeah, OK. OK, in that case, then, um, thank you for introducing that, Michelle. Over to my colleagues in the chamber, myself, my vice chair to my right. Are there any questions in relation to this report, please? Jeff, I'll come to you first. Thanks, Chair. Um, at point 3.3, just a general question. Do we know why Penadre chose not to introduce a new curriculum in September 2022? Accepted it's their prerogative, but they seem to be the only school that didn't. So, and why did their rationale differentiate from other senior schools in the borough? Thank you, Chair. Would you like me to answer? Thanks, Helen. Uh, it, yeah, it, if you wanted to, Helen. Yeah, yeah. If not, Sue's happy to answer it. But no, please feel free. OK, um, 
Thank you, Chair. Um, as far as we're aware, in terms of Penedre, they felt that they would like that extra time. Um, they didn't have to implement this September. Um, they were already on the journey. They've been making preparations. We're aware that they are making some good progress ready for that. Um, but it was their decision that um, they would like to wait um, so that they could implement um, very effectively following September. Could I, could Great, I thank you, Kath. Yes, please, Sue. Thank there you, was Kath. also a change of leadership. Jeff. Ellen, the sorry. Deputy, the deputy yeah. head was um, retiring in, in the summer, so it was felt that actually to give the new deputy head that opportunity to develop his skills and his understanding of the cluster, that that would be a, a useful way for that that would be the best way forward for them. Thank you both, and Helen, my apologies. Um, OK, Jeff, did you want to come back with any further questions? Thank you, Chair. Um, so if we go to point 5.3, what was in the RVE syllabus and how did it allow schools to develop their own framework as stated in point 3.11 in the report? Andrea, yeah. Okay, that's actually referring to the local syllabus, um, which was uh, completely linked to the actual curriculum for Wales, because that was the guidance that we um, were given as such. So um, everything within the local framework is linked on Hub, where the resources for Curriculum for Wales are kept. Um, however, under statutory guidance um, and SACRA, which is the uh, kind of religious board, yeah, uh, we have to have a localised framework. In the past, you've been able to divert quite a bit so to make it very localised, um, but in this case, we weren't able to with that. However, the um, team that puts the local syllabus together felt that it was enough within the framework to allow um, a localisation um, within Merthyr for that. Alongside the syllabus, we also provided some support and guidance as to what was in the community, different groups, et cetera, that they could utilise in terms of perhaps things like visits, um, et cetera, as well. Um, so that allows them then to make sure that the Merthyr element, the, that local element, which isn't obviously in the higher level guidance from Welsh Government, um, is uh, appropriate for the needs of the children here. If we go to point 6.2, BETP is a system of getting business to work with schools. What is the criteria for these businesses to take part in this scheme, please? In terms of the criteria, it's about different sectors. So um, what we're looking at is to raise aspirations. So um, that's the kind of main purpose of the BETP um, and to look at how we develop the skills needed for the workplace as children start really in, in primary schools. Um, under the kind of old curriculum, um, that didn't really happen until sort of secondary schools, but under the careers work related education framework now, um, that goes across the, the 3 to 16 continuum. So in terms of a criteria, it's simply about what they can offer. So within our seal, uh, which I believe is going to council tomorrow, um, in the, the seal it gives different options to businesses as to the type of things that they might think about providing. Uh, so that could look like something around uh, discussing um, skills, it could look like mentoring perhaps, it could be reading sort of buddies, that sort of thing, um, to allow uh, children to have an understanding of what pathways they can take towards uh, different careers, but also to have an understanding about uh, what is entailed in different jobs as well. But thinking about that career progression right from three through to 16 um, as well. OK, thank you. Jeff, did you have any further questions? Continue, Chair, thank you. OK, at the title, what do we do next? Um, Sorry, it's point 6.3, I apologise. At point 6.3, in the early days of this scheme, who are the community partners? So, 
sorry, Jeff, you're talking about the um, 6.3, which is community focused schools agenda. Yeah, 6, 6.3. So uh, let me just get to this bit because I can't see it on mine. Yeah, engage community groups. Through the community focused schools agenda, engage community groups in supporting learner experiences, et cetera, et cetera. As part of the community focused schools work that we're actually doing, we've got a pilot in the North Cluster, as many as councillors will be aware, many people will be aware. We're actually looking at specific community groups that will engage with schools to so it's similar to what the business is, what can they actually offer? Now the the as you 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 will be aware that community groups can apply for specific grants. So if we're looking at particular experiences that schools want, that's a tick in the box for community groups. If they then say we're going to work with this particular school or we're going to do this work with this school. It is in its infancy. That's why it's sort of where we want to be. We want to see all schools linking with the community groups, but community groups also linking with the schools so they're not seen in isolation from each other. It helps with um, the holiday enrichment programmes as well that we can actually do because you're signposting families and young people to this is what the community groups can offer. It's part of this curriculum is about enriching the you know, opportunities within the community. So this is part of our, our way of engaging schools in the community and actually seeing what can be offered. More reports will be coming to council and it could be something that you want something to come to this scrutiny about when we actually look at the pilot that we've done in the North Cluster, which includes BCA and actually that understanding of where we are now through Shared Prosperity Fund. We've got to, we look into actually then mirror that in the Kavatha Cluster and in the Aventav Cluster, roll that out. It is a major priority for the Minister. It is where the minister is driving schools and each cluster is doing things slightly differently. Um, so you know, that would be something that you may want to consider um, to scrutinise later on, Jeff. But you've, you've answered that. So at point 7.3, point have opportunities been developed for governors and parents to understand the changes, etc. And, and and how are these progressing and what evidence exists to support that? So that's 7.3, sir. I'm just going to bring Kath in from Central South, if that's okay, Kath. Yeah, just to answer from the, the respect of the, the governors, um, we provide termly sessions for governors on Curriculum for Wales. So we have been for some time. Uh, we We hold them as online sessions. We record each one of those and then we make the recording and the, the, the presentations available then to governors afterwards. Um, we actually just last week held two um, sessions for governors on their role in terms of the new self-evaluation accountability um, framework um, and then as a follow-up to last week's uh, hour and a half presentation session there was this morning then um, drop-in sessions, question and answer sessions for governors then to come and sort of further scrutinise and question aspects of that. Um, so there are materials, either governors can come uh, to attend those sessions live or they are now all available on our website to, to access. Um, so certainly we're really supporting governors to see how their role has changed um, within the new accountability, self, you know, improving schools uh, system. And then, of course, schools themselves, we support the schools themselves to to know how to um, share the information that's needed with parents um, through sessions that we do with with head teachers and um, through some of our, our network meetings. Thank you, Kath. Um, our scrutiny uh, allowed chair to have access to that web page or, or, or whatever uh, if we're not governors. Um, yeah, so everything on, on, on our website, all of those things are available. You don't need to log in. So what we can do is just arrange for to, to send you a link that takes you to all of those recorded assets. I think it'd be really beneficial, actually, um, for you to engage and might provoke some further scrutiny questions. Uh, be really happy to engage with you on that. Thank you. I'm, I've no more questions, but I've got comments. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you for sending that through to our colleagues as well, Kath. Um, that would be really useful. Um, Jeff, no problem. I'll bring you in when we come into comments. Um, just to um, let everybody know, I'm going to bring in Councillor Anna Williams-Price next, then my Deputy Chair, um, Councillor Gareth Lewis, and then Lawrence, I can see your hand up. I'll bring you in then after Gareth. OK, so Anna. 
Thanks. <clears throat> Um, on page 15, there's reference to the implementation of Shine Days, which could take the form of trips or similar experiences. Can I ask what's the current assessment on the rollout of the new curriculum and its impact on the cost of the school day? Is that the financial cost of the school school day? Sorry, Anna, I missed that last bit. The impact of the cost of the school day on pupils and families. OK, so colleagues, I think where Anne is coming from is where we talk about, you know, some of those additional um, extracurricular, um, you know, activities that'll happen, they'll take them outside of the school is in relation to that. So, Kath, I'm going to bring you in. Yeah, so to the extent that, that I can talk, because this sits at individual school level, but in terms of what we look at in terms of our ex equity and excellence uh, strategy at Central South and promoting the inclusion of all learners within each school curriculum. So we do um, promote that uh, idea that there is a cost to curriculum and, and that when designing their curriculum, schools have to give considerations to, of course, a breadth of experiences, but looking at um, and what what financial implications there may be to that. So every each school has to determine that themselves and that's part of their work in designing and then reviewing and, and refining their curriculum you know schools that that are doing that well are constantly um, engaging with their parents and surveying parents and carers and community members to to know if their their curriculum has got any sort of negative impact on learners if everybody can access it um but that is something that that um all schools are encouraged to consider as part of um the equity and excellence aspect of curriculum for wales Thank you, Kat. I'm also going to bring Sue in, Anna, if that's OK. We've also done some work um, with the schools on the cost of the school day. It's something that obviously with, you know, with the poverty agenda we're very keen to do. We had a recent um, seminar with the schools in January on the pupil deprivation grant and actually how they can use that to help mitigate the cost of their, you know, of various activities. And we're really looking with a, with a group of head teachers and governors at the um, cost, um, the cost policy. That, that all governing bodies actually sign off so the cost of the school day and you know, what you're actually expecting so um many mem or some members will be aware that victoria winkler from the bevan foundation sits on our education partnership po um panel and she's quite keen you know she's obviously very keen on driving this agenda right and forward so we are working with schools um to actually see how we can support how we can support them further we've had a recent qu um request from some parents about the cost of catering for example and how that is impacting on families. We don't we want children to be able to do the catering, but a lot of parents cannot, you know, can't afford the ingredients. So we're looking at that the schools use their PDG grant to support that at the moment if parents, but it's how we can actually support schools further to do that. So it's an ongoing conversation with the schools. Thank you. Yeah, by all means, Helen. Thank you. Just to add to the responses so far, um, I think head teachers are being quite creative as well, so it doesn't always cost. Um, I know some of the head teachers have been looking at different ways to have these shine and immersion days, maybe using parents who can come in and share their expertise, um, look at local authors who are happy to come in. So, you know, they are looking um, creatively so that it's not always um, a financial cost to the school using local resources. Thank you, Helen. Anna, just be with me a second. Gareth just wants to interject on this particular subject area as well, if that's OK. Yeah, th thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I visited Troy Drew Community School and, and they, they're they involved in Shine Days as well. Um, but it's, 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 it's one of the schools, I think, that does take into consideration the, the cost of the school day. Um, in particular, if we if we go back to December, there was a, there was a tweet that went out on Troy Drew School um, with regards to hidden, in, hidden poverty. And within that, it says at Troy Drew Community Primary, we want to help. We're working hard to ensure the school day does not add to any financial pressure. So, I, you know, I, I, head teachers are taking in consideration the cost of school days when um, promoting these shine days. Um, and I think Troy Drew is, is just one example of that. Thank you, Gareth. Anna, back to you. Um, thanks. Uh, obviously, I appreciate the, there'll be schools that uh, that do this well. I suppose my wider question, and, and perhaps for the cabinet member, is how are 
how will you ensure that pupils from lower income backgrounds are able to access the curriculum on the same level as the wider cohort going forward? She's just nodded at me, Anna. Um, this, this is why we want the community focus schools agenda. And in all fairness to the head teachers, when we did a session, we did a session on the cost of the school day in September, and they said we they were the ones that said we want equity in every school. So if there's a school, you know, in the south of the borough, a school in the north borough, it's they, you know, we need to be able to give them the same support. So we have got good examples and we will, you know, we're working, they, they're talking about recycling clothes, but actually seeing if we can have it centrally, you know, so, so all schools can actually access it. So they are very keen to make sure that there is equity across the county borough. It's not as easy to put in just like that, but we are working with them to make sure that that's the same. So we have got good examples. We will drive that forward across the rest of the the rest of the schools. Thank you. Um, we got a few more. If that's okay. Um, so in terms of the development of the curriculum, um, obviously recent testing inspections for both Goiter and Tedeschi, the Butters PIU, identified in their recommendations um, issues around curriculum development and planning. What specific support has been provided to these schools to strengthen their work on the new curriculum? So, um, yeah, Helen, did you want to come in there? Or Sue? I, my apologies, I'm sort of going right, left, right, left, but no, Helen, I'll bring you in there if that's okay. Thank you. Um, yes, for those schools, um, so you identified the schools there um, that had had Estin um, inspections. There's quite a lot of support going in at the moment. So the schools have an improvement partner um, who is directly linked to the school. Um, and they're responsible then for brokering any other support. So they would be looking at what's needed. There would have been some support going in already because these schools had been identified as schools needing a lot of support. Um, so we've got a range. Um, Kath here is from the curriculum and PR team. So we've got some, um, some numeracy support, literacy support, support to develop foundation learning for the younger children. So the environment um, is appropriate. And then the improvement partner will be supporting on those strategic leadership areas so that they can improve their processes for self-evaluation, school improvement, and of course, teaching. So teaching is central to this. And we know that the curriculum won't really develop unless the school has got um, a solid teaching and learning strategy and policy so that all the teachers and staff know what is expected. So there will be plenty of support for that as well, because that we see is, is the basis. Once we've got that, um, the strong teaching and learning, um, you can then develop um, the other aspects. Thank you. Um, looking at um, some listed barriers to implementation, um, <clears throat> one uh, noted is constraints of budget. Um, so could I ask the cabinet member, how have you been advocating within the cabinet to preserve school budgets in the next financial year? Yeah, yeah um, obviously education is of utmost important to all councillors, as I'm sure you would agree. So it is priority um, along with um, perhaps neighbourhood services, frontline services, but education is absolute priority. So we are trying every single way to save as much money as we can for our for our children. Thanks. And do you agree that there is a risk of failure to deliver the new curriculum if budgets are constrained? No, you don't? Or I'm not sure really how to answer that. <laughs> Obviously, you know, um there's a lot of work that's already gone in already. When we're actually looking at what the what the budget what the budgets will be, you know, we are working with the schools to ensure that we mitigate as much through you know, through other avenues than actually cutting so your support staff or cutting teachers. And you know, there will be information being brought back to council to governance scrutiny and to council on the on the on the impact of those of you know, what we've what schools budget forum have agreed and what's going to count again governors at the moment. Thank you, Sue. I'll just go one more if that's OK. Um, <clears throat> so another issue that's been raised and was echoed in the feedback in schools I visited is that um, schools feel that they require more clarity 
on how they will be assessed um, in this new curriculum. So can I ask um, what representations have been made to Welsh Government to achieve more clarity for schools on assessments going forward? Kath is going to come in next. Yeah, thanks. Um, it, it, that, that is commonplace across all schools in Wales at the moment. There is, uh, with the loss of our national standards and, and benchmarks by at levels, um, it has left a void that, that is really concerning for a number of schools. Um, there is, I, I meet regularly with Welsh Government, with the curriculum and assessment team. I'm the, the regional lead on assessment for us with our work with Welsh Government. And, and the there are no plans for any national standards, outcomes, benchmarks, um, or any sort of national approach to assessment. Um, the assessment guidance that we have on hub is is what all schools need to follow and it really is about identifying progress of your learners from their starting point um, and there is no expectation that any data relating to that will ever be shared externally beyond understanding what the next steps are for that learner um, and supporting them in their in their learning journey and that is a, a monumental shift from a, a, a high accountability high stake system um, so really that level of accountability is coming through the self-evaluation processes for schools as opposed to by by holding and measuring data uh, we are supporting schools there's a lot of coaching a lot of mentoring going into supporting them to understand those implications and how some of their previous practices um, no longer need to be um, continued within this new approach. But I think it's going to take some time for, for the system right across Wales to have the trust in themselves and, and in, in the powers that be that actually there, there is nothing beyond what's already given to us on Hub. Um, and and it, it, it's very challenging. We, we've got a lot of professional learning and support that we give uh, to schools around assessment and progression. Um, I would say in evaluative terms, nearly all uh, bespoke support requests that, that my team are, are, are doing at the moment, and, and that runs into 200 requests, are around supporting them to understand assessment and progression. Um, but that is not against any national measure at all it's just getting schools to understand that the entry points for their learners uh, whatever their baselines are and understanding then how to measure discuss track progress from those those entry points thanks okay. Clara, that, Clara's just going to come in there as well if that's okay Anna sorry Sue did you want to come in as well yeah yeah, yeah Andrea yeah so Clara first yeah can you in I think we've we've seen in the minister's announcement that there are some changes around reporting of data at key stage four from next summer, and we're going back to the same information that we had in 2019. Um, so I think that will help um, the system to see the outcomes for um, at key stage four. The challenge that we've got with that is we don't want the assessment to be driving the quality of provision in the classroom, because we all know that some schools did things to boost their CAP9 score. You know, there, there were lots of um, of things that schools could do that possibly weren't the best for the children and, and thinking about the curriculum, and it doesn't go with the ethos of the of curriculum for Wales. Um, we have been working as well with Qualifications Wales and the exam boards and the consultation, which you should all have seen on Qualified for the Future, has closed. Um, they had 2,126 responses to that, um, which comes from right across the sector. So mostly education professionals, but there are um, cabinet members, WLGA, parents, children, employers. So there's, there's a really good cross section of people who've been involved in that. Um, and we met with Qualifications Wales today, and they're very keen that their assessment system moving forward for the new GCSEs fits with the ethos of Curriculum for Wales. So they're talking about being far more creative and having to think differently. Um, and their concern at the moment is people are talking about assessment as we know it and how we can change assessment 
as we know it. So, you know, 200 children in the hall on one particular day, all doing the same exam at the same time. Um, and they're very keen for qualifications in the future to be very different to that and how they can how they can look different. Um, fitting in with the ethos of Curriculum for Wales, which is about schools having a bespoke curriculum for their learners. So it, it doesn't sit with, you know, 2,000 children across the borough doing the same exam on the same day. Um, but that's also quite difficult for people to get their heads around because we've got to make sure that assessment is equitable. Um, every child has the right access, you know, testing when ready, when are people actually ready? So there's an awful lot of work that has to sit behind that. Um, it is nerve wracking for schools not knowing what the accountability assessment is going to look like in five years time. But I think it's we've got to be brave and hold out that and trust Qualifications Wales that they will design a qualification system that meets the needs of our learners rather than designing a curriculum that meets the needs of the exams. Um, so that's the hope. Thank you, Clara. I'm just going to hand over to Andrea, Anna, then we'll uh, just come back to you. Thank you. Uh, Andrea. Just to add to what um, Anna was saying there as well, the, the recent Eston publication on assessment actually specifically says that those those schools who are waiting um, for that assessment are being held back. But to actually think of this as a change of mindset, which is uh, what uh, Clara alluded to at the end there is that we're we're not pushing students to prepare for examinations. We're building them for life. Um, so that whole concept change and that thinking change is that you can good quality teaching, good quality assessment, which is integral to teaching and learning, will allow any child to sit any form of test assessment whichever at any point in time so it's it's that kind of thinking as well so those types of publications are available to schools you've also got things like the national conversations that are going on which are um are looking at well how are schools approaching this so other schools then can learn um from that i think kathy you're involved in the Kamai project um as well which again is a is a national project research project looking at what schools um what that might look like um, in the future as well. So whilst there's nothing there at the moment, there are lots of things that schools can draw upon. But the key thing for schools to draw upon is to make assessment part of teaching um, and not just prepare for an examination um, at the end uh, as well. Thank you. And Anna, any other questions for you? Thanks. If it's OK, let's just prompted one more question is um, in terms of removal of assessment and perhaps more widely about the implementation of the new curriculum, um, what has been the, the current assessment of the impact on teachers workloads? Andrew, did you want to come in there? Do you have any idea or? <clears throat> impact on teachers workloads yeah either in regards to the removal of of um those national standards or in in respect of the introduction of the new curriculum more generally i could probably give a response but i'm not sure it's qualified by evidence etc because i think it depends who you're talking to uh, as to that, I think a, a lot of support is going into schools or there's a lot of support available um, from uh, organisations like Central South, from um, other consultants, etc. Um, in one respect, you could argue that sort of taking away some of those measures has relieved some of that pressure. However, it's a teacher's natural feeling to make sure that they want to get the best for their pupils and therefore the best end, end outcomes. Um, so it's, it's kind of reversal uh, within that. There's certainly um, perhaps some angst amongst the profession around uh, the changes because it's an unknown um, and we're no longer in a, a situation where the curriculum is scripted, uh, but you have overarching statements that you're then trying to make sense of. Um, and what we have to remember is that sense making has been going on for a number of years and now we're into sort of the, the reality of that. So I think in, in terms of a sort of an evidence base, um, it will depend on 
where that comes from, what that looks like within a school and how schools are managing it. Because a lot of the sort of funding that goes to schools, so for example, um, if it's collaboration funding from the consortia, that's there to be able to release, to give time for um, practitioners to make sense of what's going on and to be able to work together collaboratively to build things. And the whole sort of purpose of that is that we do get that through curriculum that we're thinking across and sharing that practice um, around and developing there that way. So the, the crux of that then would be that that should reduce workload because you're um, building upon the ideas and, and sharing those ideas of others. So I think it's a difficult question in terms of because there's a perception related uh, link to that as well. Um, if we go back a couple of years, Welsh Government issued some guidelines about reducing workload. It's also in the whole school approach to well-being in terms of um, staff and for schools to look at how they can manage those workload for um, their teams. Um, so, for example, in, in assessment, rather than marking every single book and commenting every single book, you can have a whole class feedback model, which is aimed again at, at looking at the misconceptions rather than uh, perhaps marking for the sake of it. So there's those sorts of things that you can look at in order to, to reduce the impact of, of the curriculum change. Um, I'll just come in there, Anna, as well, if that's OK. So, yeah, just recognising what Andrea said there, part of the evidence that, you know, as a scrutiny committee, we found because inevitably we went out, didn't we, and visited a lot of the schools, I think what we would need to consider is as part of our forward work plan is that at some juncture we then um, evaluate and see what the impact of this is. Because, you know, we talk to those who, who are um, becoming specialists in the areas of learning, etc. You know, when we talked about, um, I certainly questioned them and said about, you know, sharing that within their clusters as well. I know that one of our Welsh medium schools, you know, would like to share that, you know, within a wider context as well. So they're all sharing this practice that they have. And then perhaps we can see, just making the reference to, to what Andrea said, you know, Perhaps one school is finding a way of assessing or scoring or discussing a little bit of a, a, an easier way than perhaps another school is doing it, perhaps a little bit more uh, bureaucratically, should we say, you know. So it's about sharing those ideas as we go forward. So Anna, I'll make a little note of that and then we can discuss that as far as our forward work plan is concerned. You know, as this goes on and becomes even more embedded, we can find um, an opportunity where we can come back and revisit it. Is that OK with you? Yes, thank you. Okay, doke. OK, thank you all. I'm just going to go to um, my colleague, Gareth, Councillor Gareth Lewis, now my uh, vice chair, thank you. and then to Lawrence. Thank you, Chair. I just want to go back to Jeff's point, it seems a while ago now, about governors and, and parents and understanding the, the changes of the new curriculum. Something we did at Abercarney within the Standards Committee was, was look at the new curriculum and in, and in particular RSE as well. So this was during the summer term of the previous academic year. So it was quite proactive in a sense because it allowed to dispel a lot of the myths that were surrounding RSE and, you know, just prior to the, the, the campaign. Um, so that was particularly helpful. I think I'm right in saying, Anna, there was a meeting with parents regarding RSE or were they invited to to discuss it? Yeah, lovely, thanks. So, yeah, we, we went through um, the, the system they're using to deliver RSE to the children, the, the Jigsaw programme, and, and it helped us understand uh, what it was all about and help dispel all the myths. So that's one example of, of how parents and governors are, are learning about the new curriculum. Thank you, Gareth. Thank you for that insight. Um, OK, I'm going to go over to one of our co-opted members who's on screen. Lawrence, fire away. Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, I must apologise if I'm uh, on screen. I can't see you, but obviously I can hear everything that's going on, uh, some sort of glitches, and that's why uh, I've been popping in and out earlier on in the uh, uh, conversation to try to get everything working, but uh, so apologies for that. But first of all, before I go into some questions on the report, just a quick pick up on um, Anna's uh, question regarding uh, assessment and so on. Um, which I know will give a lengthy reply and thank you for that. But in terms of, um, uh, it's a bit surprising actually that with all the work that's gone on in the last couple of years, as I said, uh, that uh, uh, this uh, assessment hasn't uh, really uh, been a um, focused on and uh, ability because uh, I'd like uh, people's views on, it's a case of then those who might co come into schools and, and have a look at uh, how things are progressing, can it not be seen as being subjective 
uh, rather than objective as a result of that, because there's nothing real, no clarity as to what uh, these uh, 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 potential uh, things that people are looking for. I don't know if anybody wants to comment on that. Okay, I'm going to bring Kath in to comment on that. That's okay. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, so I think, again, like I think we've alluded to already, it really is what's so difficult about this is it's such a huge uh, shift in mindset and expectation. I mean, no, we wouldn't now be going into schools and, and in isolation looking at either their assessment outcomes or their assessment practices would be looking at the quality of the curriculum and, and integral to that curriculum is the learning and teaching and the assessment that's happening during the learning and teaching. So it's really thinking less about assessment in terms of in isolation and more about assessing that verb of, of assessing being something that we're doing and that we're seeing in the classroom every day. Um, but but certainly, you know, we um, it is more challenging if we want to compare um, any kind of outcomes, you know, of different schools, because, of course, their their starting points, their whole journeys are going to be different because they've each designed a curriculum uh, that, that that is bespoke to them. But I think it's just remembering that every one of those curricula that they have designed um, does align, of course, then to the mandatory elements of curriculum for Wales that does give us, even though high level, it does give us that level of co consistency uh, that, that that will help us across Wales. But that's part of our work really in, in helping governors, parents, carers, uh, even school improvement staff to see how going into schools, whether it's a book look, warning, learning walks, all of those things will now look very different. Um, and even when we look at governing body work, something I've been doing with a few governing bodies is looking at, well, previously we might have had an assessment subcommittee, we might have had a learning and teaching, or we might have had a standards, whereas if now moving forward in terms of the ethos of curriculum uh, for Wales, then curriculum is the, the learning and teaching and the assessment and the standards all in one. So now it's about sort of scrutinising, maybe critiquing and looking at the quality of the curriculum that's been designed to make sure that there is progression baked in, that, you know, there is a clear um, understanding of, of what the next steps are in learning and then that, that teachers are adept at understanding then how to check to what level the children and people are engaging with that curriculum and to what level they're embedding the knowledge, skills and experiences within it and then being able to identify appropriate steps to move them on um, was previously what we were trying to do was was move our learners onto a particular attainment point. Um, so it, it is more more challenging, but it, it's something that that we can um, certainly move to with with support and training to know now what we're looking for, which is slightly different from the previous system. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry saying that, but what I'm uh, getting at is those those well, like I said, or whoever is actually doing that. Um, um, a visit and assessment, if you like, or some sort of a, um, a, well assessment of how, how a school is progressing. How can we be sure that there's consistency from, uh, from by different people going across the schools across well, where the CSC or across Wales for that matter, uh, that the, there is a consistent approach in those uh, looks uh, go, going forward. So we know whatever school we go into in, in the, sorry, apologies, the framework and guidance is, is what gives us across Wales the level of consistency. So no matter where, which school we go to in Wales, we know that they are all learning across age three to 16 within these 27 statements of what matters. We we know there are you know key elements within every area of learning that they they all cover, but there actually isn't a consistency in terms of approach because that is that level of agency and, and autonomy that has been afforded schools now. Um, so it is about um, using the mechanisms that Welsh Government have provided for us in terms of national networks. Um, regional networks, local networks, because what we're trying to do through those is share practice across clusters and across Wales to have a sense of at what level have we pitched our curriculum? Is it aspirational enough? Is it challenging enough? Is it, and we share in that 
in that way, um, as opposed to it being a sort of accountability moderation. And of course, the inspectorate has a role to play in that as well, um, because they are also, as well as inspecting, they are producing uh, thematic reviews and reports into um, aspects of curriculum. Okay, okay, it's uh, still a, a bit of a open debate. The, the other thing uh, I picked up on, on one of the responses where it says a number of schools concerned about assessment, a comment was made. So uh, uh, therefore, there must be schools who are confident in assessment. So who are, who are they and is that sort of confidence being shared uh, across the board in terms of their confidence and what they're doing? Thanks, Chair. Um, so, um, as I know, Helen's already mentioned, each school has their own improvement partner and, and that improvement partner has close contact, regular contact with each school. So, so we've got systems whereby the school improvement partners will share back with the curriculum and professional learning team um, any examples of good practice or emerging practice where they feel that actually a school seems to be really confident really happy in their approach and then uh, somebody within my team might go out and visit that school and sort of critique it, interrogate it, learn a little bit about that and then where we do see uh, good practice we then share that within um, any number of our, our uh, curriculum networks. Um, we've also got the National Curriculum for Wales uh, Professional Learning Programme and we've just held a series of sessions on assessment and um, each region uh, partnership across Wales have highlighted schools who have emerging positive practice in this area so that schools can benefit from hearing from others right across Wales. So when we are made aware of, of, of good practice in that area we do try and share that. It always comes with that caveat that this particular school may have very well developed assessment practices and procedures because it's it's part of their curriculum. They are assessing this and that at this point because it's appropriate to the content that they've planned and sequenced. So there's always that caveat that each school, you can't really um, just take good practice and transplant it into your own setting. It's about it, it being part of the vision and the, the whole curriculum design process. But of course, any schools that that um, either flag through their improvement partner or, or come directly to us requesting support for assessment, um, every school is able to receive bespoke individual support for, for that in addition to then engaging with the national programme or our our regional offer. Yeah, I understand that. Well, thank you for that. It's just that, that uh, it's still surprising, well, not surprising, that there is still concern, uh, as I say, with, uh, I may be wrong, with the majority of schools uh, regarding this particular topic or so. Okay. Um, Bear with me, Lawrence. Sorry, Helen, did you want to add to that? Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Yes, hello, Lawrence. Hi. Um, just to add to what Kath has said there, um, you talked, Lawrence, about consistency and trying to ensure a consistent approach. Um, certainly in our organisation, um, we have several quality assurance processes. Um, and so <clears throat> I meet with the improvement partners regularly who are going in all of the Merthyr schools. So I look at the records that they write. Um, we have one to one meetings about the school so that I can quality assure the type of work that they're doing. Just as you mentioned, Lawrence, when they come into schools um, and they'll maybe do a book scrutiny or a learning walk with your head teacher alongside leaders. So I do a lot of that quality assurance. And also I'll be meeting with the other principals who link with the Cardiff schools, the Bridge End, so that we can make sure that we've got a, you know, a consistent approach um, across the region. Um, you also talked about sharing um, and Kath um, responded to that. So we do make sure where we see that really good practice, we make sure we signpost, signpost schools so that they can visit and share. And I know that is already going on in clusters where there's some very good sharing, working with that close um, cluster working with their, their curriculum design, how they work with parents um, and families. So there is some sharing, but we can certainly do more promotion with that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Lawrence, any further questions from you? Yeah, well, on the report itself, no. Um, uh, going back to uh, 6.3, I know where, where Jeff picked up a, a question about the community focus schools agenda, engage community groups in supporting learning experience through wider opportunities. What I, was, I wanted to ask is, um, 
I know, as, as was mentioned by Sue, that uh, there's been this project in, in the north of the borough uh, regarding this. So uh, what I'd like to explore is like who has been doing doing this and, and to what degree, what support has been, uh, been given in order to make that a success? Um, we, we started with some research from Cardiff Met, who actually worked with governors and schools and um, community groups in the north of the county to actually see what was there and to see how they were, how they could actually work together more effectively. Welsh Government funded last year, they gave the local authority 30,000 for a community focused schools manager and we also had 78,000 family engagement officers. We've utilised the family engagement officers in the north of the county with two, so they sort of, they work across the schools, working with families to encourage pupils back into, into school, particularly if they, you know, when they've got the persistent attendance. We also funded um, a family engagement officer, which is shared between um, a school in the Southern Valley, in the Southern Valley, and also in the Kavartha cluster. We looked at our women, our Welsh Index of, of Multiple Deprivation data, and also our free school meals data to actually identify which schools would benefit from that work. We're currently um, looking at that gap analysis. You'll be aware, um, Lawrence, that one of your schools has actually achieved um, a quality award with the heart of the community um, uh, for their community work. Well, that we are taking that into the north of the county, but also we've developed that framework with the person that runs the heart of the community to actually develop that framework for community groups themselves. So community groups can actually mark themselves is the wrong word, but actually can, can look at their work against that community. So see how they are that framework to see how they're engaging with schools. So it started last September. The members of staff were only in post probably November. The first one was in September, but it hasn't really, it's been fully, fully, in, fully staffed since January. So we are early, to early days. But as I said earlier on, each cluster will be slightly differently different because of the community groups that they've got there and because of the interaction that the schools have at the moment with that. There is funding for schools as well for capital investment to actually develop the community schools aspect as well. And that's gone to, it went to about eight schools last year and there's a further four or five, um, five or six that we've just put in funding to Welsh Government. And that, that idea is to actually open up the school grounds, to open up the community buildings, to make sure that there's a community, aspect of the school that can be used by the community but we are very much aware that a lot that a number of our school buildings won't be able to do this so their community use area might be a community facility within the locality which is why we're trying to sort of develop to develop that across the across the piece but it is early days and the intention is that we feed back to this this um this committee and to council as we move forward mm. So in terms of the community engagement, as you said, has been uh, put in place and uh, well, grant funded per se. So obviously there's a time uh, expiry on that activity. Is, is the expectation then that that will just uh, put in place the structures and uh, that will be the end of it? And then the assumption is that they, they will carry on uh, without those individuals involved? We've got the as as part of the shared prosperity fund. We've got it for another at least for another two years. So it's as we're moving forward, we'll see the see the benefits of it, and then we will see how we can utilize funding or utilize those people to support this work moving forward. But we've got it for another two years anyway. Okay, thanks, thanks, Phil. Um, okay, uh, let, uh, if I move on then um, uh, on the section seven and is a what uh, we need to do next and it mentions there about uh, uh, 7.1 uh, we see first that was developing uh, schools are developing a curriculum and engaging in the principles of co-construction across clusters now it was mentioned later in the report in terms of how uh, successful um, schools are working in clusters in order to share that uh, so I'm just intrigued, really. Uh, why do we sort of say it's what we need to do next? Because it seems to me it's, uh, it's been a strong element in where we are today. Uh, is that a fair comment or not? I answer and then hand it over to, um, to CSC. I think um, 
Anna or oh, I can't remember who picks up the two the two concerns. I think it was Anna that picked up the two concerns about the schools that are um the two schools the inspections that we've had. So I think that's where we're looking at is the need to have to have that first hand evidence. And it's a conversation that we've been having with CSC and to actually ensure that we are confident. So I'm confident as director, which means that I can give confidence to the cabinet member that all, you know, where all our schools are. So I will hand over to CSC, but I think it does fit in with, with the conversation that, um, or the question that um, Councillor Williams Price asked early, earlier on as well. Thanks, Chair. Um, so in terms of, of cluster working, I think there is, um, th there's a lot to celebrate with across the borough um, and, and Curriculum for Wales gives that sort of mandate for cluster collaboration in a way that clusters have never collaborated before, really considering what it is that is that, that children and young people are, are learning, understanding, experiencing. Um, but it's it's an ongoing uh, process. So it, it will be there for, for some time as a what to do next. It's about just further embedding it, further developing the relationships, because um, really it's in its infancy over the next, um, I, I keep saying to the clusters, over the next 10 years, wow, imagine where you'll be when staff right across um, all of your clusters have been working together on curriculum, you know, every term over, over 10 years. You know, we've had 30 years of a particular system. I think, Lawrence, you mentioned about it's hard maybe to understand in terms of assessment why schools are still struggling with that. But but we, we've had an assessment and accountability system for, for 30 years that we've been indoctrinated into where we've had to prepare children, and young people to attain a at a test or an exam. And now this is requiring such a different shift in thinking and then different shift in systems processes. Um, and it's the same for cluster working. Um, so it's it's about celebrating those clusters who have started to collaborate, but recognising that this is an ongoing process for them um, to, to continually uh, collaborate on curriculum, um, of course, on assessment, learning and teaching. And, and it's one of the most exciting elements, I would say, of Curriculum for Wales, because if you're working with your cluster, you are looking across that three to 16 uh, continuum, that journey of a three year old going through. Um, so so the cluster working is really exciting um, and, and uh, Practitioners are really benefiting from talking across primary and secondary phases and learning about the, you know, child and adolescent development from each other, as well as as, as sharing sort of tools of pedagogy and the craft of teaching. Um, so, yeah, it will continue to develop um, and improve, uh, but we're there also supporting clusters, any clusters who are in the infancy of their collaboration work. Yeah, it's just a, uh, it's just surprising because, the, as you say, the strength and the self-supporting mechanism of the clusters uh, is been invaluable in the actual work that's been had to take place in the um, implement well design stroke implementation of curriculum for Wales. Because I, I keep hearing all the time how this the support across each other has, has been such a big help to each other in order to achieve what they've achieved. So it just seems it's a very strong element. And going forward, you know, you talk to anybody, well, the ones that I talk to and have sort of visited, uh, they are very, very positive towards it and is very enthusiastic about it. That's all. I, I don't think they need any encouragement because they uh, they driving it themselves. Um, on uh, uh, again, what to do oh, next? Yeah. Lawrence, Lawrence, yeah. Chris, you just bear with me a second. Sue wants to come in. Okay, I yeah. I don't think we we are saying that um, the that that they're not enthusiastic about it. What um, what we're asking for, what the report is asking, is that we actually get the first hand evidence that all the schools are engaging in this and developing their curriculum. You know, they talk about it, but we need the first hand evidence so we can actually re report to you that as part of our local authority inspection. Um, meetings, which we have on at least a termly basis, we can give confidence to Estin that we actually know that our schools are developing their curriculum in a pos in a positive way that's going to meet the needs of all children, and we don't get any shocks when it comes to inspection outcomes. So that's what that is saying that we want. We need that first-hand evidence to support what is going on, to support what we, the statements that we are making. Yeah. I understand. I just wonder what the, well we are. What that evidence is, we we'll, we'll wait to see. As long as it's not another additional burden on uh, the uh, school staff, that's all. <laughs> uh, 
Um, no, it doesn't uh, come from the schools. It would come from the consortium, Lawrence. Not. From I'll, the I'll, I'll, I see what you mean. Sorry, yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, seven two then, uh, and what we need to do next is says, ensure partners are aware of the changes to the curriculum. I was just wondering um, what um, who, who who what partners are we referring to? Who who are these uh, uh, people that we uh, referring to there? It's the, it's the community groups and the wider stakeholders that work with schools. So if they're unaware of the changes to the curriculum, they may continue delivering or offering what the, they work against the old curriculum. So it's how we engage with those and they have that understanding of the four core purposes of the curriculum and how the new curriculum is developing the young people for the for, to be the citizens of the future. So in, in terms of... Um... Is is there a big gap there then? Are we aware of uh, of that need? Yes, we are aware of the need. That's what came out in the research that was done from Cardiff Met. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, the next uh, point, is it? Lawrence, can I just check? We are still on questions, yeah, before I move on to observations. Yeah, yeah, uh, just okay, the questions. Good. I think you covered that once. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to move on. Um, I'm just going through my notes here. Oh yeah, uh, it's, uh, I'm trying to try and uh, how we can do it. On the top of page eleven of the total pack that we've got, um, it, there is a comment about the national curriculum for Wales. Um, uh, professional learning program has been refined and relaunched in September 2022 with CSE as key partner in its design, delivery and evaluation. This is a stronger focus on schools sharing their emerging practice. So what I was wondering was in that, why is it necessary to create a program in order to share best practice uh, as, as, current, as, as a evidence at the moment for this conversation we just had about um, uh, what the CSE is doing, what clusters are doing. So there's, there seems to be, uh, why is there a programme when this seems to be uh, happening by uh, uh, sort of default, if you like, uh, as a result of Cricket for Wales design? Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we, we need to recognise that um, it's not necessarily happening by default. There is still a knowledge and understanding deficit in, in you know, with some schools, some practitioners across, across Wales. So the programme is, you know, um, it's a dual purpose in terms of just recapping on some of the key knowledge, understanding of, well, here's here's what is expected of assessment in Cricken for Wales, here's the changes to practice and then the second part of it and here are examples of schools who've embedded that well or here are examples of models that 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 have aligned to that so um, it's just about making sure that we continue to address def deficits in, in people's knowledge or understanding because you know not every school has been able to create the time and space for the level of professional learning that is really required Required. Um, not all teachers, we still on our travels meet some teachers who don't know where the guidance is, how they access it on Herb. So it's constantly just consolidating um, understanding with, with teachers at the same time then as sharing positive examples um, to, to sort of operationalise that high level guidance for them to make sense of it. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes me and wonder Lawrence. that. Lawrence, yeah. be with me a second. Clara just wants to add to that. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, I think, you know, the, the programme has been put in place because we have got that intelligence and that first-hand evidence from schools. Um, and we do have changing practitioners in our schools, although schools were working on developing this before the pandemic and during the pandemic, we have had um, a number of staff changes. Um, people have been promoted, changing roles, working on different aspects of the curriculum. And I think moving forward, there'll always be a program around what's working well in the curriculum. How how do we share that? Um, because it will change. And there is the expectation that schools should be reviewing their curriculum and changing it. Um, you know, the thing that we should not be hearing for for at any time is that schools saying we've done the curriculum, the curriculum is finished. 
um, because the children coming in every year are different to the children that are in the school. Um, so there will be changes to it. Um, and I think in lots of cases, those networks work really well. Um, but there are some practitioners who were on are on their own. You know, if you think about some of the really small primary schools, um, there isn't that other practitioner to share with and to have those discussions. Um, so that program has come from requests from schools um, and making sure that that need is being is being met and continually encouraging those schools to share the the best practice and that emerging practice. Thank you. Thank you, Clara. Lawrence, any further questions? Yes, unfortunately. Um, the jumping down into the barriers uh, that is uh, listed in the report. Um, I just wondered how, how some of these are going to be addressed. So, for example, uh, one that's uh, in the list there, it says about the legacy from the pandemic, more time needed to support pupil well-being. So it's stated, so how do we expect, or is there any um, plan to address this? Thank you, Lawrence. Um, with these barriers, um, this was something that the improvement partners were discussing with head teachers. So they're not common and they weren't raised by all schools. Um, but we've got a selection there that certain schools, um, you know, did say that um, was preventing them from um, really progressing further. So this would be something the improvement partner would be aware of with that particular school. Um, from my information, it's not a lot of schools. But so we would have that knowledge and the improvement partner would be supporting there in terms of some strategies on how they can do that, how they can make the time and maybe sharing. So finding a school that's managing this very well so that they can then um, work together and, and help in this area. But it's not something that was, um, you know, talked about by a lot of schools, but we would have that knowledge and support. Thank you, Helen. Um, just before Kath, if you want to come in, but I'll just bring Andrea in then, in addition to what um, Helen has just said. Lawrence, just be with me. I think in terms of a plan, uh, Lawrence, there's the, the whole school approach to mental health and wellbeing, and um, there's a lot of good work going on within Merthyr linked to this. So um, I think that that's schools have put things in place and they're continuing to do that so if we if we think about sort of perhaps some of the the, the counseling things that have gone into place so the place to be that exists sort of uh, in the southern valley in the, in the north would be the exchange um things like shine which is a, a kind of a preventative model from cams etc so there's a range of different well-being tools that schools are utilizing both supported by the local authority by the health board um, by different partners um, in order to do, um, in, in order to support pupil well-being. But the framework of the whole school approach gives schools very clear guidance on how they can do that alongside, obviously, uh, the academic elements as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Kathy, do you want to add anything else? Um, yeah, so just briefly. I mean, previously we we did look at perhaps well-being as as, as sitting uh, around the 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 curriculum or as an intervention or with key partners but it's just to to say that you know now health and well-being is a central part of curriculum for wales it's really at, at the crux of those four pur purposes but also it's an equal part of the curriculum because it's one of the six areas of learning experience so as well as having that whole school approach to well-being it is explicitly taught within the curriculum um strands such as healthy relationships conflict healthy eating physical you know um well-being so it, it is now a part of that curriculum time the daily learning as well as, as as being there wrapped around in terms of intervention and, and whole school approaches. Thank you all. Th thanks for that. Uh, Lawrence, back to you. <coughs> OK, thanks. So uh, I suppose similar to, uh, on a similar vein in, in, within the barriers, there's a couple of others that was mentioned and time seems to be cropping up a lot, which I can understand because I keep hearing this constantly because one of the is mentioned says time to change practice covering the breadth and depth of the curriculum and further down it says time to work with parents and the wider community on the vision and aims of curriculum so it's obviously uh, i could I, I suppose i could lump this on top as well 
uh, one of the other uh, mentions is about not overloading staff with too many changes. So that again is is perhaps slightly different, but that puts more pressure on the staff as well. So all these things are all adding up in terms of the uh, demands and pressure on people to do these things. And that's what's coming out as these barriers. So again, I'm just wondering how, how, will, how will we really able to uh, help uh, these um, practitioners in order to uh, deal with these things? Um, Lawrence, I'll just say, I'll just interject there as well. I, th I think it that also sort of crossovers to um, what Anna was alluding to earlier with regards to pressures on some of the teaching staff, et cetera. And I think for us, you know, whilst we've had really good, consistent um, answers today, there is an opportunity to, you know, follow this up and have some sort of further evaluation. I think, you know, from our visits and seeing the barriers on page 16, inevitably, we can't tar everybody with the same brush. There are certain schools that have in that. But I think, um, Lawrence, if um, if I may, I'll pick that up as part of our forward work pro program and just see where that impact is coming in. Because what I'm getting at the moment from both our, our LEA colleagues and our colleagues from um, uh, Central South is that the work is ongoing, the engagement is there, but we still need opportunities to perhaps see what the real impact is. I think, um, unless anybody else wants to add to that, but I think that's what we would need to do at this juncture really is, is take it forward as part of a, a future, um, future part of our forward work plan and, and get some evaluation and impact at a future date. Is that okay, Lawrence, with you? Uh, yeah, except that. The only thing that uh, uh, concerns me, this uh, those observations or observations that have been attained is happening now and um, Teachers are living through this now, uh, and how they, uh, you know, what the impact or the effects of uh, this pressure on them now um, is, um, well, uh, well, it's, it's, it's time. Uh, when I say time limited, it, it, the impact is now, and, and uh, it's, it's something that is difficult to, to kick down the road. So, okay, thank you. No, that's fine. You make a very valid point, I think, with their engagement team and the engagement officers as well. These are the discussions that they have in with the teaching staff and inevitably with the heads as well. And, and I'm sure that, you know, if there is a particular school, maybe one or two others, then this goes back to the cluster work as well, where they can support each other. And I'm sure that would be fed back either through Central South or through um, Andrea and Sue and the team as well. So we'll keep an eye on it, Lawrence, if that's OK. Any further questions from you? No, thank you. Thanks. Lawrence, thank you for that. Colleagues, I'm going to take us now into comments or observations then, because I think we've asked some really great in-depth questions of our, of our um, visitors today and, our, and of our own officers and cabinet members as well. Um, you know, and there's lots for us to discuss uh, and evaluate um, as part of this meeting um, as we conclude today's meeting. But um, if I may go into observations and comments first then, please, and who would... I'll go straight to you. Gabriel Board and one of two are in this chamber this, this afternoon. I can confirm that the curriculum for Wales was discussed at the last termly meeting and we have a further presentation at the next termly meeting. Uh, the reasons stated uh, are that they weren't ready. Um, for various reasons and with the building work that's going on as well at this moment in time. And by September, we're looking forward to a brand new technology block that's going to blow the minds of my 12 year old son. If I can also then comment on the fact that there's been much discussion about then what are the critical success factors and what does good look like, if I can use that jaded expression. And, and this is what we found then in scrutiny when we went out there amongst the, the schools themselves. Um, and I think it's understandable that there is a lot of concern because effectively then we've taken away the security that's existed for quite some time and for many teachers and heads for the entirety of their career. And I think there's a lot more work that's going to be needed going forward then to provide assurance. What worries me is the fact that uh, it may be in five years time that we review this and then somebody then retrospectively applies a set of standards that didn't exist at the time 
And I think it's essential that we all then continue then to mark this so that we ourselves don't fall on the track of blaming others then for what is or what might not be. And I'll leave it to yourself then, uh, Chair, then to discuss then when we revisit curriculum for Wales, because you said you were going to do that. So thank you. No problem at all. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for those observations. And and quite right as well. I think inevitably it's it's um, excuse the pen, but a whole new world, isn't it? A whole new world of teaching and understanding for, for both the, the staff and the children as well. So, you know, there is going to be a point where we will need to come back and see just how, you know, at certain times of measure, if you like, how it is actually going, you know, and, and gain that feedback. So thank you for that. Anna, Councillor, Councillor Williams Price. Thank you. Um, just taking the opportunity really to reflect on the schools I visited, which were Abercarnid Community School and, and Hilgerig Primary School, um, and the conversations I had with staff there, but they were broadly positive about the new curriculum. And obviously we've touched upon some, some of the concerns, but particularly in terms of collaboration across clusters um, and also the opportunities the new curriculum presents to put the pupils at the heart of their teaching. There was a huge enthusiasm for that. Um, and I would just like to thank um, members of the CSE for their answers on these topics, which have provided a higher level overview of the situation. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that. And yes, I think just recognising the um, welcome that we all received um, from those schools that we visited, didn't we? You know, I think I think perhaps um, we would honestly say there was a little bit of nervousness on both sides because it's new for us all. Um, and, and certainly them having scrutiny members coming out to scrutinise them on something so um, in its infancy, shall we say, you know, but it was really worthwhile. And I think the welcome was was there from all of those schools. So, yeah, just to note that. Thanks again. Um, thank you, Anna. Are there any further? Other observations, colleagues. Jeff. Very, very briefly. Um, the report we received today, I, I like the brevity of it and, and commend that. However, could sometimes an example or two be put into the report to no, she says no, <laughs> purely and simply because it would expound the that the, the, the that point was trying to be made. It's just it would seem to me that's what happens in business it would seem to be a reasonable request, so. Uh, um, my colleague nodded. <laughs> I'm not sure which way she nodded though when, when I co-opted member Jeff B had asked that question, um, but I'm sure it's something we can um, consider and officers and, and visitors consider moving forward, Jeff. Um, thank you for that. Okay. Um, just in summary then, as I said, and I've already um, mentioned, I think some, some really, oh, Anna, fire away. Oh, sorry, apologies. I, I did glance and there wasn't a yellow box around him, but there now is a yellow box around him. Lawrence, fire away. Get the mood off. Right, yes, just to say, uh, uh, again, I say thanks, uh, CSE, for a, a very uh, enlightening report, and uh, it is good to be able to chew over all these things uh, in, in this level of detail, so that's very useful. Um, but I just want to echo, I, I suppose, what people have said earlier, and, and to remind uh, what's going forward, that, as you said, we are at the beginning of the Kirkham for Wales journey, we know that, and uh, certainly we will never, as I say, uh, I think as somebody mentioned, we will never be able to say we've finished because, as we said, it's a, an ongoing uh, reassessment year by year, uh, depending on the children, and hopefully, as I say, it's the children's um, abilities will increase and therefore will push the uh, curriculums to increase accordingly as time goes on. So it's a matter of, um, I suppose, within education, it's a well-known fact, change is always there anyway, but... Uh, uh, I just want to sort of uh, echo the fact that, yeah, Curriculum for Wales is there and it's, a, it's going to be a constant um, element of review, improvement, assessment and change. So thanks, Chair. 
you're welcome thank you lawrence and um in conclusion then as i said it's a matter for this scrutiny for us to discuss as we talk about the forward work plan how in a timely manner we can scrutinize this um as we move forward um and give my thanks obviously to our officers our cabinet member for their attendance and um how wonderful it is to see you in person um so clara thank you so much helen and kath thank you all so much and really for your uh, your honest answering of the of the questions as well that were put to you and inevitably we'll see you at some stage in the future so thank you ever so much um guests thank and you. colleagues aside from my scrutiny colleagues you are more than welcome to leave at this point in the meeting so thank you ever so much for your contributions well i just pause for a second thank you Thanks, guys. OK, guys, um, agenda item number four is the forward work programme set out as it is. Um, inevitably, when we come to reflection and evaluation, I think that, you know, we do need to consider it a timely manner, um, you know, revisiting curriculum for Wales and the scrutiny of that. Um, we do need to add an additional item at some point, but I'm going to do it outside of the normal scrutiny meeting, if that's OK, guys. And that will be a workshop on uh, those two school inspections of Goitra and um, Tidusky, because we do need to, you know, just really look at some, um, look at the reports, consider the recommendations and just see what work is already happening and how our colleagues are taking that forward. So we'll we'll so look we, at. Do we need to add Gethy Vailog to that? as well, given the yes, sorry, yes, get the bylog will add to that. However, I'll just need to check on timings in relation to the inspect publication of the inspection report. I think it came out at the end of last week. OK, that should be all right then. Yeah. OK, so, yeah, we'll do that um, and we'll send out a diary note on that for everybody. Um, item number five, revo report recommendations. Well, um, guess what, guys? I, I think that was that was fantastic. Um, Lawrence, everybody, everybody who contributed. Um, I, I'm saying Lawrence because I just want to make sure he's there and, and he knows that I'm included. And it was like glance over to the screen. It's such such a strange way of working hybrid, isn't it? Um, let's just remind ourselves. The recommendation was the members discuss and debate the content of the report, reflecting on our school visits and identify there are further aspects of this agenda that need scrutinising. Well, gosh, yes, there are. Of course, the whole thing still needs scrutinising. Um, you know, as I said, ongoing at, at, at certain times. Um, timely interventions. So, um, yeah, excellent questioning, guys. Well done. Some good observations there as well. Well done. What we'll do is not at this point, but when we talk about the forward plan as we move forward from May onwards and we have that round table cup of tea and biscuits, I promise you, discussion, then um, we'll make note of this and include that in there. Look at Jeff smiling. I will make sure I'll bring some biscuits and tea. All right. Um, Agenda item number six, feedback on scrutiny activities. Um, I've received feedback um, from the ALN task and finish group. Thank you to, to those who have contributed with that. I know that you've met officers and considered responses from schools, and I know that we're going to discuss this in our March scrutiny. OK, so it's agendered for then. Um, item number seven, Lawrence, yellow box. Yeah. I saw the yellow box. Lawrence yeah. is there. Yeah, just to uh, pick up on that point, as you say about the uh, uh, task of finish group, what I will attempt to do, because you know we talked about it in, in the pre-meet last week, um, I will attempt to try to put some report or promise in by the end of this week uh, of sorts. As this is, it's a shame that uh, we haven't been able to get all the parental uh, input as yet. I'm hoping to achieve that before March. But uh, possibly a report per se might not contain that element. But I'll try and get something together, uh, share it with my colleagues on the on the group, and then perhaps get it uh, to you uh, to see wh wh how you best want to uh, bring that forward to the rest of the committee. No, Lawrence, thank you for that. That was, um, you know, 
just just for us and of course for Jane as well, just to make sure that it's it's done within the timelines of the constitution, really, to make sure those reports are available prior to that scrutiny. But also it would be useful if as chair and, and vice chair we had sight of it, um, if that's okay. So would much appreciated, Lawrence. Thank you for that. I can just see Anna's put a light on. Anna, jump in. Thank you. It was actually a, um, in relation to a point on the forward work programme, uh, Lisa, if you don't mind. No apologies, um, right away. Because um, in terms of what we had under additional items, I think the one thing um, that I think is um, not not a concern, but I think I'm disappointed that we weren't able to achieve in this year, is around tertiary education. Um, because I think if we can make sure that's on next year's forward work programme, that has lots of intersection in terms of Welsh um, medium education as well. So I think that needs to be a, a priority for the next cycle, if we can. Yeah, Anna, forgive me, because I've been in a tertiary meeting with the minister this morning in, in my other life. So bear with me a second. It's like, you don't mean the new tertiary commission. You just mean Welsh medium education provision, tertiary model for Merthyr being a tertiary model of learning. Sorry. I've got it in front of me. So it's around that transition. That's all right. Yeah. It, it really is. And it's twofold. So what we need to do is we do need to talk about that from our own um, perspective, Mertha Tidfell. And then um, perhaps I can just share with you as scrutiny members how the, the whole tertiary commission for post-16 education is also changing as well. And we can share that because that, that would be really of value to you as scrutiny members, you know, how the world of learning, we've got the curriculum for Wales, but how the world of learning is also changing out there in the next couple of months, certainly in the next 12 months. But no, apologies, we've got that as an additional item as well. So we'll use that as part of our discussions in April, May, ready for the next 12 months. Thank you. OK. Um, scrutiny referrals, I, I, I have none. However, um, Jeff and I have had a little catch up, our cooperative member, Jeff Beard, um, and, and colleagues, I spoke to you about it last week. Jeff um, just brought to my attention the uh, Children's Commissioner for Wales and, and his feedback in relation to the um, RSE um, and all of that information. At that point, you know, we decided uh, being legislative in Wales and legislated by our own um, Children's Commissioner, what we would do is we would just keep an eye out just to see if our own Children's Commissioner makes any comments at the moment. I know there was a legal um, representation um, uh, and that was lost and, and the government won that in relation to, to the new curriculum. Um, but mindful of it, read it, you know, it, it, it did bring up some, some really concerning points of view. Um, but I think what we'll do is we'll just keep an eye on it and see if our own um, Children's Commissioner brings anything up, Jeff. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, and it, you're actually right what you, what you say, except can we just make sure that um, perhaps this is put on the forward plan? The report itself was very, very concerning and accepted it was about England. I, I get that. But what happens in England is often mirrored in Wales. It, we're not absolved from it. I'm sure it is happening. I, I hope I'm wrong. But we need to be aware of that and we need to ask the, the, the local authority if it's aware of it and how it's going to deal with it so perhaps we could put that on the forward work plan uh, just to have a, a look even if it's just a, a brief report to say no there is nothing to worry about yeah no absolutely that's absolutely fine sorry one of our democratic officers rushed in i don't know if there was a sense of urgency then or not she's okay um jeff that's absolutely fine yeah you know um and and i think just um, the point that you made, I think will suffice, you know, have there been any concerns, reports, etc. If not, then, you know, we can just have that as a short overview. Anna. Could I ask that this report is shared with um, committee members? Because I don't think I'm aware of it, um, Jeff. And without further information, I would not agree with your assertion that things in England are often mirrored in Wales. Um, 
Yeah, no, Anna, it's fine. So in our pre-meet last week, I just wanted to check with Jeff that he was happy that I could share it with committee members and, and he's okay with that. So I'll send it out to you all. Well, I won't send it out to you all because my laptop has died in another way now, but Jane will send it out to us. Yes, I, I thought that everybody yeah, no, had a chance. Just needed to double check. So, yeah, if that's all OK, we'll yeah. get it all sent out to all committee members. It's a public document. Jeff. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. OK, uh, last but not least, item eight, any other business deemed urgent by myself? I have none. Just to thank you again for um, such a great meeting. Really good scrutiny, as always. Very proud of you all because it does make life a lot easier. But more importantly, it shows really, you know, to to our uh, partners out there as well that we really are um, challenging um, what is presented to us. So thank you for that. Take care, everybody. Lawrence, take care and, and see you soon. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, guys.